Hey, you're back with the Get Out of Deck Guy podcast. I'm Steve Rowe. The old Get Out of Deck Guy with me is Damon Day, the new Get Out of Deck Guy. Unless you're new, then you're not back. <laughs> you're here. You're here now. Hey, and while you're here now, <laughs> do us a solid and go ahead and like this podcast and give us a comment in the, the comment section. If you have a question, you've thought of anything, it just gives us a little boost on whatever platform you're listening on. And so we appreciate it. Damon, we're back talking about personal finance, money problems. And it's interesting. Before we did this podcast, I was looking up, hey, what's a new idea of something that we could talk about? And it is just amazing that personal finance surrounds just like the same basic topics. You don't need to, you know, have a PhD. There's not necessarily anything that's like breaking news. So dealing with money is either about managing your money, saving, investing, budgeting, or financial literacy. It's all basic stuff that you and I have covered for the last 30 effing years. And yeah, so you, you jumped onto chat GPT and you're just like, what, what was your thing? Like hot oh, topics and personal finance. Yeah, and yeah. What, what are the, what were they? Hot, it, what are the hot topics in personal finance today, Steve? Yeah, it was nothing really stimulating. Yeah, it was money management, budgeting, you know, whatever. It was all just basic, boring crap. But you know what? That's personal finance. Basic, yeah. boring crap. You know, there's a, it, and it hasn't really changed, you know. It's 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 all the same. But we do have a a topic today that we've covered before, but it's been a while. What yes. is that, Steve? We're going to talk about uh the ridiculousness of student loans. And again, the whole federal student loan thing is back in limbo or purgatory or whatever religion misplacement place you believe in, because now the Biden save program, which was going to eliminate debt and reduce people's payments is now back on hold. It's in forbearance again, while it works its way through the courts, a couple of Republican state attorney generals sued saying it was unfair or Contra, I don't, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's been a ping pong match of back and forth on this stuff for years now. And, and so, my favorite, we, my favorite Reagan quote, Steve, yeah. do you know what it is? Oh, man, uh, I forgot to turn my phone off. That's what that was. Oh, sorry. So, the Reagan quote was, It wasn't like, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, that is the Reagan quote. That's what it is. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. And I think it, this this wasn't this wasn't documented, but I think he followed that up with "never underestimate the government's ability to f shit up." Right. I think right. that's the end of that quote. Well, Don't I quote I, me, but I think I think that's right. You know, I I think the problem with any government program is the same with any regulatory action that tries to correct a specific situation by using a broad brush, which affects so many things. So, you know, we're talking about student loans again. You and I were talking the other day about how the st federal student loan program has been in such turmoil with with no common pattern moving forward. All of a sudden, loans are forgiven or they're not, or they're being sued to avoid forgive forgiveness, or you've been in a program and they're not forgiven, or whatever it is, There, there is no stability in the federal student loan program. And here's the thing that drives me absolutely crazy is I understand that college as uh, high school counselors tell people they need to go to college. I understand parents say you need to go to college. I understand kids want to go to college oftentimes because they want to get away from mom and dad. But if we look at college education as a good financial choice, there are much better ways to achieve a college education. Like, for example, here's one important fact I want everyone to keep in mind and consider, which is when seven, about 75% of people who go to college have the student loan debt, but never graduate and get the benefit of the degree. So <clears throat> if you're graduating high school right now, you're not quite sure exactly what you want to do what you want to study and go to college. You, if you want to go to college and get a dance degree, a history degree, an English degree, or some other bullshit thing, save your money and take a take one year off 
you know, have a leap year, jump year, skip year, whatever you want. Try to figure out exactly what it is that you want to do before you go to college. And then when you do go to college, do not go to an expensive school out of state. Start at your local community college and, you know, get your base classes under you. Make sure that they're going to transfer to your in-state school that you're going to go to or wherever. And be financially smart about getting an education for the least amount of money that you can. Or, Damon, what what else can people do besides going to to a a four-year school? Uh, Just tell an employer that they have a degree, even if they don't. (laughs) Yeah, you could lie about it. (laughs) (laughs) It's cheaper that way. Right. Uh Or No, I'm not not advocating that. That's a joke. That's a joke. Well, it might be a joke, but there's some truth built into that. Is it well, better? There's also to go- a joke in our Penny Stupid podcast when I talked about a lady faking Uber accounts and made three quarters of a yeah. million dollars and went to jail for a year and a half. And I said, there's a lot of people that might take that trade. <laughs> uh, so it was a joke, you, but a lot of people went, huh? <laughs> if, you t- so, if you take the morality out of the statement, is it better to go to college and get a $100,000? English degree or to fib that you have an English degree and save the hundred grand. <laughs> Take the morality out of it. I know which one I'm picking. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you, if, if you can do the job, you can do the job anyway. Right. But I, the point that you're alluding to, I mean, there's plenty of jobs that have been deemed for the last 10, 15 years to be beneath people. Oh, that's, that's blue collar. That's working with your hands. But I know a lot of, you know, auto mechanics that are super happy. They, they went to a technical school, learn how to work yeah. on cars and are making six figures a year with no debt right now. And their friends that went and partied at UC San Diego or whatever. Yeah. And are dealing with $150,000 in student loan debt and they're 30. They're wishing they made different choices, you know? Yeah. And Steve, hmm? what's the number one reason college is so damn expensive? Federal student loans is uh, probably number one on the list because. The more people had access to easy money without any sort of qualification, the schools readily sold people into getting their butts into seats and taking the student loan money. And then they used the money to expand campuses, build more buildings, pay higher salaries, whatever. It just drove the cost of college tuition sky high. Yeah, it's a classic example of government trying to help. Yep. And having massive unintended or potentially intended consequences, depending on who you're asking. Right. Yeah. But it, it came from this idea of, well, everybody should have access to a quality education. That, that sounds great. Everybody should have access to a quality education. So the government stepped in and did what? Started guaranteeing loans. Cause you, on one hand, you think, why is a bank so stupid? It doesn't make any sense. Why would a bank? loan $100,000 to somebody who, as you said, wants to get a dancing degree or a history degree. That doesn't make any sense. The bank's not likely to get paid back. They got to be smarter than that. They want They don't want to lose money. Don't, don't the banks have people that are smart. Don't they have someone sit there and go, yeah, I don't think we could loan you. I know the college is charging $30,000 a year for this dance degree. That's going to take you five years, but I don't think that's a good investment for us. And the government says, hold on, hold on. We got you. We got you. Yeah, it's going to be a good investment. We're going to guarantee that for you. And the bank goes, oh, the government's going to guarantee it? How much did you need? Yeah, here you go. Good luck, Johnny. (laughs) Dance your ass off. (laughs) Federal student loans started well intended, like every other government program, in that the idea was in order for America to get ahead, we needed to help better educate our workforce, and people to have higher skills to compete more in the world. Makes perfect, perfect sense. But when the blind are leading the blind and people are headed off to college at 18 years old with no real idea about what they want to do, and they're just racking up you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt, it doesn't make any common sense. And it's no surprise that many people end up disappointed and grandma loses her social security check and the parents are getting sued for co-signing and all this other stuff. Don't do it. Yeah. And you know, the the irony is the thing that started to allow more people access to college has now turned into nobody can go to college unless you're extremely wealthy or you're willing to be an indentured servant 
for a large extent of your adult life to the bank, to the government. I mean, if I, if I, there's, I, there's, there's millions of people that went to college that are buried in loans right now that if they could do it over, would never go to college again. If they could turn back the clock yeah. and say, would you go back to college knowing what you know now with these loans and the job you have and all that stuff? They would say, no, absolutely not. I wouldn't go back to college. W- would you go back to college? You got Google. What do you go to college for? <laughs> I, I mean, really, other than the experience, right? it's not like it was in the 70s where it's like the, these college have, have the knowledge and I got to get in the door so I can get the knowledge. And they have the libraries with the books and the books yeah. have the knowledge that I need to get ahead. You have access to every piece of information you could possibly want. You don't have to go to college. So why do people, oh, my employer requires a college degree. Maybe. Well, well yeah, back that's to becoming less and less you make true. It, baby. <laughs> less and less true that they're requiring a degree. So, yeah, if you got the skills for the position that's open, you don't need a degree. Now, as an no. example, here's a good example being a, a pilot. If you go to pilot training and get for the least amount of money and you work your way through, you get your single engine, commercial, multi-engine, start landing a crappy paying gig, building hours and stuff, you can get onto a major airline eventually uh, for $200,000 less than somebody paid to go to a, an aviation program. Yeah. So vocational schools can be a good thing. And I wouldn't discount them. And I also would not discount this whole thing about taking a year off. I think, hey, get a local job. Do something. Go listen to our Penny Stupid channel on youtube and you know learn how to do side gigs yeah you can well unfortunately side gigs would pay you enough money to put yourself through college if it was 20 years ago if the government didn't get involved in student loans yeah (laughs) you could door dash your way through college but the government screwed that one up yeah all right damon are there any hot burning topics that have crossed your desk recently yeah, we had one that we were going to, oh, well, not not hot burning topics that have crossed my, I mean, the student loan stuff's just been a disaster forever. And I know, you know, the the latest fiasco with the save plan is what caused us to kind of start talking about it again. Yep. But I really kind of wanted to focus on, you know, p- people that have loans, it's a disaster and, you know, we're, you got to take it almost day by day these days with this program and that program. And now we're going to do this, but now that someone's suing that program and we're going to, I don't know how it's all going to play out. But for people that don't have loans yet, it, you know, your kids are in high school or junior high. Now is the time to start planning. You know, back when I was a kid, there was no planning as much as, well, you're going to college. It was a given. Like right. there's no, if, at least in my household, it was, you know, we all got straight A's. We were all Eagle Scouts. You're going to college, right? It was right. just more of which college you're going to go to and, you know, what do you want to study? But I think that conversation is dramatically different these days, especially because, Parents today, many of them still have this huge burden of student loans themselves. Right. Right. They're still now they're seeing the aftermath of that and they're feeling how they're feeling in life and almost like this helpless feeling like, how am I ever going to get out of this? And now they're looking at their 12 year old, 13 year old going, I don't want that life for my kid. Right. And so that's a very important conversation to have. And you mentioned this at the beginning take a year off. You know, there are certain things that, you know, if if your son or daughter wants to be a lawyer or a doctor or some highly skilled, you know, profession that right. requires much more than a four year degree, they're they're going to have to go to college. There's no, uh, well, <laughs> we can go to the Caribbean Medical School. <laughs> but yeah, whole setup. Right. I can tell you what it's not. It might it might seem cheaper and faster, but I have clients that went that route. Yeah. And they have not even been able to pass the tests they've been needing to pass to get the jobs they need to get to pay it back. So, you know, there are times where they're going to have to go to college and that's fine. But if your child does not know what they want to do, I would not, I I would, I just wouldn't do it or go to a junior college, right? That something that you could door dash your way through a junior college these days still, but do not go to some four year school paying out thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year just because you can get a loan 
if you don't know exactly what you need, that what your son or daughter wants to do and is likely going to be able to do, has the aptitude and desire to do. And you have to look at that as an investment. Is that a good investment? Is this 150 grand in student loans that we're going to be left with a good investment because of the return that we're potentially going to get? And in more than half the cases, I would say the answer is going to be no. That's a horrible investment. Well, if you know? I if I look back on my 18-year-old self, I would not have been – there's no way I would have been able to make a good decision about what my future looked like because I just didn't have enough experience, right? But you have a degree in finance and I have an MBA, and there there's nothing that I ever needed the MBA for. And you probably never needed your degree because if I had to do it again, I would go learn a skill uh, like a CNC machine operator or something that I'm personally very interested in is uh, logistics. I, I would love to know how to organize and move things around the world and do that for a bigger company. However, all that being said, what I know about my personality is I would not want to work for a big company again ever. <laughs> Just you, sucks you've, the you've life worked out. for your share. Didn't yeah. you used to work for IBM? I did. And Hewlett Packard or no? No, not Hewlett Packard, but IBM. I mean, it was just meeting after meeting after busy work and it was soul sucking. So why did I want to go to school, get an MBA or a finance degree like you and then go work at a job that I hate? How does that make any sense? Well, it, it only makes sense if you if you don't think about it, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, that's what we've been told for 30, 40 years. You're, even, you know, Hillary Clinton, right? Yeah. You know, eh, college graduates make a million more dollars over their lifetime than non-college graduates. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, it's just politicians, parents. Our society is almost like, if you don't go to college, you must be a loser. Right. That's kind of the... The, you know, so if you're a parent, of course you don't want your child to be a loser, right? So, oh, I just have to sign this and my kid could go to school. And right. then, oh, of course they're going to make more money because now they're going to be college educated. And I know that college educated people make a million more dollars. And so they'll be able to pay this back. It's all BS. I mean, it's kind of a scam. If you think about it, <laughs> for a lot of people, it's a scam. Well, what's one the thing definition I... of a scam? It, what? I don't know. Oh. College? <laughs> College. Well, one thing I would like people to think about right now is if you're struggling with student loans or your parents are struggling with student loans, Damon is always there. You can talk to him. You can go to his website, Damon Day, D A M O N D A Y dot com. Damon barely got Dude, that. Are out. you okay? I, I'm, apparently, I'm having <laughs> hey, a stroke. <laughs> I'm not always here. So, sometimes. I'm not always here because sometimes I'm door dashing or that's true. Walmart sparking or Instacarting. Go to our Showing penny people how to check earn that extra out. Money. I can show you yep. how. Well, yeah, I show you how to make some extra money so you can pay for these damn student loans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like my daughter just did a a couple month long or month long class from Harvard Business School and completed it and has a, a whole new set of skills that she can use and has a Harvard business school certificate that she completed the class. And I, I think it was $1,100. Yeah. You know, there's definitely wasn't... ways to, you know, but again, it starts with planning, right? Figure out what you want to do and then figure out what's the least expensive way to be able to get to that point. Right. Yeah. Like you don't always need to do the $150,000 four year degree. You know, it, it doesn't make you special anymore. It makes you nor everybody's got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar degree these days. And like underwater basket weaving's a hundred and fifty grand by the time it's all said and done. You know, let me digress for a minute. In looking for what are the most uh, popular personal finance things that people need to know about, and, and I I asked Chat GPT, what is something unique that people could do to save more money? And it came up with the benefits of the coin jar challenge, basically taking a jar, putting all your change in it, and then, you know, putting that in a savings account. Who has Even change Chat anymore? GTP is behind the time. <laughs> Dude, I try to, I think I happened like, a month, I don't even remember the circumstances. I don't know what happened. Yeah. But I, I had to pay for something with cash. I don't know if I, 
I don't know if they didn't, didn't take an American Express card. I don't remember the situation, but I remember I was like, oh crap, do I even have cash? And I had like a five or a 10 or something. Yeah. And I paid and they gave me like coins, change. And yeah. I'm like, what do I <laughs> put in my pocket? I'm like, you know, the last time I had change in my pocket. I don't even carry money anymore. Yeah. Well, I, I usually carry like 20 or 40 bucks, you know, just in case. Yeah. But, but it's like, yeah. So chat GPT is awesome, but it's, it's not perfect. It's, you know, it's the old Dave Ramsey envelope system. I, I don't think Dave teaches that anymore. Does he? Or maybe he does. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. But here, remember that you get cash in the envelopes and you carry oh, your yeah. grocery envelope into the grocery store. And who's going to do that? So here's something, the 52 week money challenge. I would not heard about this before. But in order to help you to start saving money, the first week, you know, out of 52 weeks in the year, the first week you save a buck. The next week it's $2. The next week it's $3. So every week you add one more dollar to the amount that you're saving. So at the end of the year, in the last week, you're saving $52 for the week. By the end of the year, you'll have almost $1,400. And, you know, that's pretty much easy money and now at a 5% interest rate for cash reserve account you know you're looking at an extra $65 on top of that for doing nothing that's pretty sweet or or you could just follow our penny stupid youtube channel and i can yeah. show you how to make that every month yeah work work a, for two a weeks a few or... hours yeah a few hours a week and and then at the end of the year you could have $20,000 that would be <laughs> cool <laughs> Or you could save a, a dollar a day and just keep adding a dollar and have fourteen hundred for the year. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just right. what are you gonna do with fourteen hundred dollars? Go to McDonald's twice? Well, people <laughs> struggle with finances. You like, didn't get my joke, it... Steve. That was an no, inflation I, joke. I, I got it. I heard it on oh, the Penny man. St- I heard it on the Penny Stupid podcast. Don't make that joke. <laughs> Change the words. So uh, anything else you want to add on uh, today's get out of debt podcast? Well, I mean, we covered the, you know, be smart about what you're doing for your kids. Don't just sit uh, blindly enroll them in college and sign up for loans. Uh, avoid yep. student loans at all costs. If if you yep. can figure out a way to avoid student loans, avoid student loans. I do want to emphasize the, the, the government's culpability in this freaking mess that they're trying to fix. Because as you know, I, I'm, I'm always about blaming the government. <laughs> well, and it doesn't matter what political affiliation is in office either. It's it's been the oh, same no. all along. It, I'm here from the I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But it, that's that. But that's the reason why colleges have just become impossibly expensive because it just made easy access to money. Oh, yep. I know what I want to. I have a suggestion for whatever administration is in office. Yeah, it's 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 going to be a mess to fix what's already happened. But moving forward, I have a good suggestion on how we can fix this mess with the student loans. Do tell. Instead of the government guaranteeing the loans, because the banks are going to have to loan the money, right? And they're, it's yeah. going to have to be a good deal for them. Because bank, I, the problem would be solved right away. Bet, let don't guarantee the money, and then bankers would decide who can go to college or not. Fine, but here I got a better solution. Instead of the government guaranteeing the loans. Mm-hmm. The colleges that the loans are going to <laughs> guarantee the loans. Dude, <laughs> how brilliant am I? I thought of that last night. This shit would get fixed tomorrow. Oh, if the yeah. college was on the hook for the money, if I took $100,000 to get your stupid ass degree and with your education after four years, I couldn't get a job that paid that back. The college eats the money. <laughs> Boom. I'm here Problem all week, solved. boys. It's done. It's over. I fixed it. Put me in government. <laughs> all right. So next time we're going to be talking about uh, some other personal finance thing. If you have a particular topic that you would love for us to talk about, go to Damon's website, D-A-M-O-N-D-A-Y.com, and uh, fill out his contact form. Let him know what the topic is. And we'll take a deep dive next time. Damon, or just, I will. Or just go to our main site too, right? Getoutofdebt.org. It's got our I, podcast I even, on there. Yeah, I just don't know if I have a contact form on there anymore. Well, yeah, but my name's on the front page. But just oh, go, okay. to our, go to our form, subscribe to our podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at, on the Penny Stupid, the Side Hustle channel we do. We're at 982, 983, Steve? 984. 
984. Get us to a thousand, man. We're right there <laughs> and we're brilliant. We need to be at a thousand. It doesn't really do anything. It just makes us feel good. Yeah. It improves our <laughs> self-esteem. <laughs> yeah. We did it. We made a thousand, a thousand. You like us. You really, really like us. Until next time, Damon. See ya. Peace.